Judge's Familiar is one of the newest downshoots from Ravnica Remastered. It's a 1 mana 1 1 flyer that can be sacrificed to counter an instant or source spell if its owner does not pay one more mana. Being white and blue, it can fit into many archetypes, such as blue fairies or mono white aggro decks. However, it's certainly not a card that you can slam into every blue deck, as it will be useless in the likes of familiars, I know, right? Or the mirror control. So, where does it fit? My main thought was to add it to Kagates, an Azorius deck that relies on chill creatures with multiple abilities that can become monsters with the help of Basilis Gates. Problem is that many people are too attached to cards like Force Spike or Spellbirds and don't like trying new things. So, it seems that all I need to do for people to believe me is to win at least a liquid hit. Easy. The first match is against Isaac Fairies. What I like about the familiar is that now you have another creature that can block small flyers. In the past, you went in blind and at the risk of getting a turn 2 ninja on your face with not many chances of getting rid of it or dying if you never found a squad on hack. So it's a point in favor for the hack. Another neat play that came up was when my opponent tried to bolt my glider and I attempted to prevent the damage with a prismatic strands. They cast a spell Stutter Sprite to counter this and while the familiar ability can't get rid of the fairy, it can still counter the lightning bolt to keep my second strands safe in the yard. Eventually, we found ourselves in a situation where we could attack with our nope. party and also prevent the damage by tapping our familiar. As it is hybrid color, it gives us the chance to use prismatic strength from the graveyard. We attack, keeping up two blockers and a counter spell, and eventually won the game. As I mentioned, having a turn 1 blocker against fairy decks is very good, and you always can decide whether or not you want to trade for it for your creatures or keep it back to prevent your opponents from using counter spell when you are resolving your lord spells with tight mana. While playing with the bird, I noticed it could shine in some cases, where you require your opponent to pay the extra mana as it's the case of warways or similar cards. Now they can follow up with other plays for the turn without tapping out, even as the chance to resolve all spells freely. Another good use of your familiar is that you can tap it to prevent the damage with strands as it's shown to prevent our sacred cat from dying. Eventually we won match number 1, but there are still many other situations where the bird can shine as it was in match number 2, game number 2 against the SK Ephemerate. It's worth noting that players may not fully know what the bird does, so they can run into misplays with it in play, as it's very easy to forget it encounters things for virtually zero mana, even if it seems obvious. After this it was just a matter of winning the counter war and resolving a guardian of the guild pack to win the match number 2. In match number 3, we just had to use 3 counters to deny our opponent's place nope. and eventually we win by pumping our creature, including a familiar that had been chipping away at my opponent since turn 1. In tight mana spots, it's also hard to play against the falcon and win counter wars. As usually, you will just keep up counter spell plus a spell spurs to battle, but with a falcon in play, you can use your mana in advance to keep yourself with more mana to your advantage and win as usual with basilisk gates. Match number 4 was against the Mir Fairies, with no major interactions of the bird, except for preventing some ninja damage and forcing our opponent to use removal on it. Now, people ask me if my success with the card is due to me being a good player, and of course, that's definitely not the case. Still, a normal level guardian of the guild pack with some basilisk gates is good enough to correct mistakes, so we move to our final match. I wonder if they wanted to use Deadly Dispute and realized that that was a mistake, so they had to use Titan Blade. Against Gardens, it may not seem like much, but having extra creatures is critical in a deck that is full of removal. And as I mentioned, making them pay the extra mana is critical to untap and resolve your spells. Still, in game number 1, the buffy creep rats, thanks to the map tokens, proved to be too much for my 1 ones. so we had to move to game number 2 and 3 for a chance to get the trophy league. Game number 2 was a long grind of us training back and forth resources. And after making some useful plays, like making them pay extra mana and preventing them from solving a turn of the Black Rose, I eventually one shot them with a buffy modern age. In game number 3, however, I was not lucky enough to stop the monarch from happening, so I had to use removal spells to clean the board, steal the monarch, and pray they don't have a snuff out, a second turn, or a venue hunter. And they didn't, but instead, they had a troll that I was not able to block, but thanks to my card advantage, I was able to stall it with multiple prismatic strands in a row, and after using my familiar one last time, 
it all came down to protecting my creatures and resolving a Garden of the Guild Pact. And just like that, I managed to go on the field in a proper league on my first try with the new card.